Success is connecting with the world and making people feel. It's finding a way to bind together people who have nothing in common but a dream. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 child stars who got normal jobs as adults. You come out on top like an aliens, can you go any higher? For this list, we'll be looking at the most popular young celebrities who left the glitz and glamour for pretty regular careers. Which of these actors would you like to see back on the screen? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Michael Oliver after being spotted in a Chevron commercial, Michael Oliver landed the titular role in 1990's Problem Child. You see, Mr. Peabody, the child is incorrigible. I'm what? Why you speak English, lady? Oliver's performance as the mean-spirited Junior Healy, who terrorizes his adoptive parents, made him a familiar yet frightening face. He returned the following year for the sequel and made sparse appearances in projects such as Forrest Gump and Drexel's Class. These ants want to get into your pants real bad, bro! But Oliver pretty much vanished from the screen after 1996, following a legal dispute between his momager and Universal Pictures over his Problem Child 2 salary. If you do the work, we might give you a free glass. Hmm. Okay. Since then, he's opted for a more quiet life, taking a 9 to 5 job in tech support that has admittedly been more fulfilling for him. Good to know he's now solving problems instead of causing them. Number 19, Ross Bagley. In the mid 90s, Ross Bagley enjoyed great success as a child actor on the big and small screen. Bagley first rose to prominence with his screen debut as Buckwheat on The Little Rascals. We got a dollar, we got a dollar, we got a dollar. This led to what is arguably his more popular role to date as Nikki Banks in the NBC sitcom The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. You running away from home? That's right, I'm out of here. <laughs> in the same year that the show ended, Bagley reunited with Will Smith in Independence Day. What you been going out there? Shooting aliens. Oh, you shooting aliens, right? Oh, you think you're tough. <laughs> right, right. Although he made a few appearances on the small screen afterwards, Bagley seems to be done with Hollywood. These days, he still resides in Los Angeles, but he now works in the real estate business and DJs occasionally. Number 18, Kay Panabaker. Kay Panabaker was only 14 when she got her breakthrough on the short-lived series Summerland. If you hurt my brother, if you even scratched him! Throughout the rest of the 2000s, Panabaker was booked and busy, landing roles in shows like CSI Crime Scene Investigation and Disney Channel's Phil of the Future. You must be new. I'm Debbie Berwick. What am I supposed to do with that? Well, <laughs> shake it, silly. She also starred in the 2009 remake of the musical Fame. However, in 2012, Panabaker decided to quit acting. According to the former actress, she lost passion for the job, particularly after a producer on a show she was working on told her to lose some weight. No, look, stop it, okay? Can you just leave me alone? Jenny. Just leave me alone. She returned to school afterwards and bagged a degree in zoology. Hannah Baker may still work for Disney today, but in a much different capacity, as a zookeeper at Animal Kingdom. Success is joy and freedom and friendship. And success is love. Number 17, Lisa and Louise Burns. The Shining remains one of the scariest horror films Hollywood has ever produced, for a variety of reasons. Chief among them is the Grady twins, played by real-life twin sisters Lisa and Louise Burns. Come and play with us, Daddy. With their matching blue dresses and spooky voices, the girls were a terrifying sight to behold, for just about anyone. But the once-in-a-lifetime role soon proved to be a stumbling block for their acting careers. The sisters were reportedly rejected from the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art as they were deemed professional actresses due to their appearance in The Shining. Lisa went on to study literature and became a lawyer, while Louise now works as a microbiologist and is a published scientist. Number 16, Angus T. Jones. Even before he was a teenager, Angus T. Jones was already a household name. Really? Yeah. It looks great with the stash. For over a decade, the Texas-born former actor starred as half-man Jake Harper on the CBS sitcom Two and a Half Men. In 2012, while in their 10th season, Jones declared that he had become born again and would like to depart the show as its explicit themes went against his religious beliefs. I'm on Two and a Half Men. I don't want to be on it. Please stop watching it. Please stop filling your head 
with Phil. After making an appearance on one episode of the web series Horace and Pete in 2016, Jones seemed to say goodbye to Hollywood for good. If he were to walk away, he'd likely be sued uh, for, for breach of contract. You cannot be a true God-fearing person and be on a television show like that. Since then, he's branched out into the business world, teaming up with rapper Sean Combs' son Justin to found their own event planning company called Tonight. Number 15, Ashley Brio. Ashley Brio is known for one role, the popular cheerleading captain Kate Sanders on the Lizzie McGuire series and its subsequent theatrical movie. Oh good, you finally found a look that works for you! But it's not like Brio had starred in other projects that weren't just as successful. In fact, other than a guest appearance in the TV show One on One, the only credits to her name are for the Kate Sanders role. I'll be taking the bed by the window. You don't mind, do you? Uh, yeah! After Lizzie McGuire ended its run in 2004, Brio seemingly left acting behind. She attended the University of Denver, where she attained a law degree, and has worked as a criminal defense attorney ever since. Many hoped to see Brio back on their screens for the Lizzie McGuire reboot, but those hopes were dashed when the show was canceled. Number 14, Danielle Spencer. To date, Danielle Spencer is still recognized for her performance as the audacious Dee Thomas on ABC's What's Happening. Why didn't you comb her hair before she came? <laughs> While on the show, Spencer was involved in a serious car accident that claimed the life of her stepfather and left her severely injured. My mom, you know, has been everything, and also my stepfather, who was the one who introduced me into acting in the first place. She returned for the three-season sequel series What's Happening Now while studying veterinary medicine at the University of California, Davis. Well, look who's talking! <laughs> Spencer soon focused on her new profession, although she found a way to merge both fields by appearing as a veterinarian on the 1997 Oscar-winning film As Good As It Gets. Sadly, Spencer has continued to suffer health challenges as a result of her 1977 car crash, which admittedly has changed the way she approaches treating animals. It helped me to be able to relate to animal pain even more so. It made me want to try to arrive at maybe the source of the animal's pain. Number 13, Stacey Keenan. I guess I won't be showing my face in public anytime soon, for I am the daughter of Schmutz. In 1987, the then 12 year old Stacey Keenan won a Young Artist Award for her work on the first season of My Two Dads. Hey, Corey, ready for a date? <laughs> She appeared on the show for two more seasons before landing a role on the ABC and later CBS sitcom Step by Step. In the 2000s, Keenan transitioned to the big screen, starring in multiple projects while earning a law degree from the Southwestern Law School. Why am I wasting my time on you? I, you're nothing but a drooling, illiterate imbecile. Hey, it's better than being a stuck up man hating know it all. You may know her as Stacey Keenan. But these days, she goes by her birth name, Anastasia Sargoski, and works as a deputy district attorney for Los Angeles County. She has also taken up lecturing, having returned to her alma mater as an adjunct associate professor of law. Number 12, Carrie Henn. Newt, are you okay? It's no small feat to make your screen debut in a major Hollywood blockbuster. That was the reality for Carrie Henn, who, at age nine, was cast as Rebecca Newt Jordan on James Cameron's Aliens. While many may see such an opportunity as a great launching pad for a successful acting career in Hollywood, Henn felt quite the opposite. She wasn't too enthusiastic about her sudden fame and instead chose to live a normal life, close to her family. You were natural. You didn't come from kid movie world or TV world, did you? No, not at all. I was actually discovered in my school cafeteria. After graduating from California State University with degrees in liberal studies and child development, Hen fulfilled her lifelong dream of becoming a teacher. Nevertheless, she remains grateful for her Aliens experience, appearing at Comic-Con for the film's 30th anniversary in 2016. I teach fourth grade. Come on, man, you teach nine-year-olds. Which is ironically the age I was when I did Aliens, right? I know! Number 11, Barrett Oliver. Decades after its original release, the never-ending story has held up as one of the most fascinating children's adventure films ever. It starred Barrett Oliver as Bastion Balthazar Bucks, a young boy who is drawn into the fantasy world of a book he finds. Yeah! Yeah! The 
performance shot Oliver to fame and landed him major roles in 80s films like Daryl and Cocoon. By the 90s, Oliver stepped away from the spotlight and has now taken up a career as a photographer and photography historian. You're joking me, right? No. No. His co-stars from The NeverEnding Story seem to have followed in his footsteps, with Noah Hathaway becoming a tattoo artist and Tammy Stronach pivoting to professional dancing. Have a little childhood, then if you want to get into the business, start acting, find a good class, get into a theater company, do the work. Number 10. Ross Mallinger Ross Mallinger was a prolific actor from age six. His big break came when he played Tom Hanks' son in the rom-com classic Sleepless in Seattle. You must be Jonah. Hi. There were many more projects from there, including the lead role of TJ in the Disney animated series Recess. Uh, hey there, Bob, your majesty, sir. This is uh, Gus Griswold. He's, uh, well, he's, uh, I'm a new kid. But Mallinger ultimately left the pressures of Hollywood in his early 20s, following in his father's footsteps into sales. He has become a seasoned automotive dealership salesman and manager in the greater Los Angeles area. It's a much less public job than the one he had as a kid. You know what, Dad? We ought to start camping more often. You're right. Camping is good. But Mallinger has found his perfect leading role on the show floor. Number 9. Josh Saviano the classic sitcom The Wonder Years didn't just follow Fred Savage's coming of age. It's called a yarmulke, and for your information, it happens to be a very big deal. I get to stand up in front of all my friends and my whole family and say prayers and make this big speech and stuff. Josh Saviano captured audiences for six seasons with the trials and triumphs of Kevin Arnold's nerdy best friend, Paul Pfeiffer. I feel like such a jerk up there. No, you're good. He had this big thing hanging from your nose, but you were good. <laughs> Unlike his castmates, Saviano didn't follow the entertainment industry into adulthood, at least not directly. He went to Harvard, of course, studied law. <laughs> He's still allergic to everything. As a partner at the law firm Morrison Cohen, he specialized in artists' intellectual property disputes and other financial transactions. But over mm -hmm. time, you develop a secondary persona, um, you know, what would Paul do? And, and there mm -hmm. did come a time when there was a distinction between what would Paul do and what would Josh do. He eventually used his expertise in creative entrepreneurship to found the startup companies Act 3 Advisors and Spotlight Advisory Group. Saviano may no longer be in the spotlight himself, but he is dedicated to handing it to a new generation of artists. Number eight. Charlie Cosmo. Hey. hey, kid. What's your hurry? Where are you going? Stop him! Take it easy. Charlie Cosmo stole the show in several cult classics of the 90s. Jeez, this is incredible. What are we waiting for? Let's go. He is particularly known for his award-nominated roles as the title character's protege in Dick Tracy and Peter Pan's son in Hook. You are the man. You are Peter Pan. But just when it seemed like he was going to blow up in the new millennium, Cosmo decided to change direction in college. He graduated with a physics degree from MIT and worked in the public sector before completing his law studies at Yale. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Professor Charles Cosmo. Corsmo has become an esteemed legal scholar, even being nominated to the Barry Goldwater Scholarship's Board of Trustees by Barack Obama. Settling in Cleveland as a corporate law professor, Corsmo has followed his interests into a successful career. Number 7. Taryn Noah Smith Throughout the 90s, audiences watched Taryn Noah Smith grow up as Mark Taylor, the youngest son on the hit sitcom Home Improvement. Look at all the wires in there. <laughs> Those too? Yeah, of course. By the time the show ended, he knew that acting wasn't for him and was excited to decide for himself what to do with his life. It's like having this one huge family that you go and you see every day. Smith built a career on his own terms as an entrepreneur, forming the vegan cheese brand Play Food, among other enterprises. In mid-2022, he became an integration technician for SpaceX. Smith may have left home improvement behind him, but he still built a lot with his own hands. The home improvement star is now fixing homes in real life. It is very strange. I, I'm now doing tool time for real. Number six, David Dorfman. 
David Dorfman had an intense childhood, both on screen and academically. Come on, we shouldn't be in a room. It's not a room anymore. The child actor broke out as Naomi Watts' son in the American remake of The Ring and its sequel. Why did you draw that house? She told me to. Who? Who told you to? Little girl. He also appeared in a number of other movies and TV shows. But his tenure on CBS's Family Law foreshadowed his ultimate ambition. A UCLA student at just 13 years old, Dorfman was a valedictorian graduate and Harvard Law student by 18. He was still acting regularly when he began an illustrious law career, but with multiple offices in the US House of Representatives, Dorfman now definitely has his hands full. Talk about scary success. Number 5. Peter Ostrom A one-time actor achieving stardom is a rare treat. Peter Ostrom had that luck when he was recruited from a children's theater in Cleveland for the starring role of Charlie Bucket in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Look, everyone, look, I've got it! The pitfall and ticket is mine! You're pulling our legs, Charlie. Ostrom's infectious wonder enchanted audiences alongside Gene Wilder's iconic antics. Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. The 13-year-old was an overnight star, but had other priorities. His family had bought a horse, sparking Ostrom's interest in veterinary work. Since getting his doctorate from Cornell, he's become a highly successful vet and dairy consultant in New York. Between this fulfilling work and the occasional return to the spotlight to discuss his brief but memorable acting career, it looks like Ostrom got everything he ever wanted. Hey, try this, Grandpa! All right, Charlie, wait for me! Whee! Number 4. Jeff Cohen Jeff Cohen spent his formative years during the 80s in the public eye. My name's Lawrence. So sometimes people call me Chunk. <laughs> His breakout acting role as the clumsy but ultimately heroic Chunk in The Goonies made him an icon of the decade. Chunk! No, it's Captain Chunk! But rather than use this credit to build his acting resume, he cultivated a network on the business and legal side of the industry. By 1991, Cohen retired from acting to study law at Berkeley and UCLA. As far as like the sequel, um, I think it's great. Uh, I think I'm better off being a lawyer. <laughs> As the head of his own Beverly Hills law firm, he has become a renowned Hollywood deal maker. Though Chunk will live on as a slapstick icon, Cohen's much sharper business shuffle is just as legendary. Captain Chunk's dead. Let's get the hell out of here! Number 3. Juliana Rose Moriello The popular children's show Lazy Town was not so lazy when Stephanie showed up. Hi, Uncle Milfer. Oh, hello, Stephanie. Nice to see you. Her cheerful energy and dancing talents inspired young audiences to stay active and made actress Juliana Rose Moriello a household name. She ended her run with the show in 2008, leaving Stephanie to be played by Chloe Lang in the series' 2013 revival. Meanwhile, Moriello retired from acting and went on to get her master's degree from Columbia University. Seriously, where are all the kids and where do they play? Who is she? What is she talking about? Though many may be surprised that she is not working in performing arts, she's still dedicated to children's physical and mental health. Moriello is now a pediatric occupational therapist in Los Angeles, where she uses her many talents to support the activity of kids who need it most. Number 2. Mara Wilson You know that book, Stuart Little? Yeah, it's one of my favorites. Mara Wilson gained instant recognition as the adorable daughter in Mrs. Doubtfire and the 1994 remake of Miracle on 34th Street. You're a very good Santa Claus. Thank you. Your beard stuck on real tight. <laughs> 90s kids may remember her most as the magical, mischievous Matilda in the cult classic film of the same name. According to a constitutional law book I read in the library, if you don't have one, you could lose your job or even go to federal prison. 
Wilson was poised to be one of Hollywood's breakout stars for the new millennium. However, the tragic death of her mother in 1996 left her feeling overwhelmed and longing for a more normal life. And she was like the first girl character that I was just like, she is so cool and that is who she wants to, that is who I want to be. Yeah. And I did get to be her. She's also said that she wanted more creative freedom and she seems to have found it, becoming a writer across multiple media. This career has carried her back into the public eye as an advocate for progressive causes and mental health. She even takes on the occasional acting role for fun. Okay, I'm gonna do the pan-roasted turbot with fennel pollen aioli, prosciutto, berlotti beans, parsnips, turnips, and carrots. So the turbot, yeah. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Danny Lloyd Six-year-old Danny Lloyd made his acting debut in what he thought was a standard family drama. Did your mother ever say that to you? That I would hurt you? No, Dad. Are you sure? Yes, Dad. He was, in fact, playing Danny Torrance in Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, one of the greatest and scariest horror movies ever. Play with us. Play with us, Danny. Lloyd's performance was praised alongside his veteran castmates, but after his sophomore role in a TV movie about Watergate, he opted for a less public coming of age. Danny's not here, Mrs. Torrance. Lloyd has been a biology professor in Kentucky since 2004, reluctant to share his claim to fame with his students. He's still glad to meet fans of The Shining, though. He even returned to the screen for a cameo in the 2019 sequel, Dr. Sleep. Oh, watch this kid, number 19. That kid is a natural. He hits the ball every time, like he can read the pitcher's mind. Dr. Lloyd otherwise feels he shined enough in the one role and is equally proud of his career in academia. Red rug! Red rug! Red rug! Kenny, what's the matter, honey? Red rug! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.